<sighs> All right. Hey guys, my name is Herbie Zimmerman. Um, my b size presentation is going to be over when a noob becomes aware of basically what I've learned thus far trying to put together a security awareness program at the company I work for. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, my family and I, we just recently moved here um, from Texas. So on a related note, feel free to throw some jokes out there about Texas. You know, we'll probably have some good laughs with you guys. Um, you know, like I said, have fun with Texas. Um, I've been in the InfoSec world now, formally, we could say about two years. Informally, though, I've always been kind of around security as a Windows system administrator for the company that I work for. And ever since moving over to England, my job has me kind of doing a lot of different things, kind of jack of all trades, as you could say. Um, but really, one of my big focus areas is around um, trying to build an awareness program. So this is kind of where my story begins. So about a year or so ago, Bruce Schneier, or however you pronounce his last name, <laughs> released, a, released a blog post out there about what he thought, you know, or what he thought around security awareness and how he thought it was a waste of time, energy, money, and resource. And it really caused this kind of great debate on the interwebs. You know, you had pros and cons, people talking about points, counterpoints, this, that, and the other. And it was really one of the first times that I like, really researched and dug into awareness and read everything that I possibly could, points, counterpoints, everything. And I walked away from this, you know, at that point, I walked away thinking, you know what, I kind of really think that Bruce had it wrong. Because for me, at least, I think awareness is just another tool within the security organization's tool belt. But on the flip side, it also really made me think, how does my company do security awareness? Do we do it well? And if we do it well, great. Well, how do we make it even better? But if we do it badly, well, why do we suck at this? And how do we make it better? So had a couple ideas, tried to get the ball rolling back in headquarters. Nothing ever came of it. You know, other priorities came up, kind of died and went away. So I moved here. And one of the first conversations that I had with my manager at the time was like, look, I really want to get an awareness program out there, try to you know, get you guys, the security team involved in projects, stuff like that. And I said, OK, cool. This is not a problem. We could do this. So I went off, and I came back a little while later, and I had a list. And I referred to it as my punch list. And basically, this punch list was my ideas, or you know, various ideas, of getting an awareness program and campaigns up and running within the organization. You know, some of my ideas were, you know, how do we get users to create better passwords? So do we get a password manager or password vault kind of tool for them to not only use at work, but they could use personally at home? Um, and we've all been through the yearly kind of stereotypical death by PowerPoint um, videos on security awareness training and stuff. How do we take that and turn that on, you know, flip it around and turn it on its head? and push it out to the company. Um, so everyone is motivated by it. They see it. They talk about it. And it's not just another PowerPoint presentation that the security team does. The other, you know, some other ideas were around you know, the same kind of concept with security awareness program. Um, but how do we package that up and move that into the, the employee's home life? So now we're not only educating them at work, but now we're educating family and friends and loved ones and raising their level of awareness, too. Um, and of course, there was the stereotypical get the security organization out there, shaking hands, kissing babies kind of thing. you know. Because really what we wanted was the security team to be known and well-liked and respected within the organization. So when new products, new you know, projects, applications came up, at that point, security was first a thought and we would be dragged into those conversations up front instead of being bolted on at the very back as the teams are trying to get you know, the compliance check mark kind of thing. And of course, I come from an organization that is very technical, have a lot of system administrators, have a lot of developers, and we've also embraced this DevOps model. We really have fallen into this um, framework. So how do we energize the base? You know, so it's not just the same stereotypical death by PowerPoint. You know, yes, we realize security is everyone's concern, but how do we get the the technical people involved talking about security and potentially helping the security teams fix security issues around the organization? So I came up with this list. I gave it to my manager. I gave it to my peers. I gave it to some of the guys back in the headquarters. 
And everyone came back and said, this is a really great list. It's a good list. You've come across, you know, it's not static. It comes across different points, frameworks, viewpoints, and whatnot. It's great. Go implement it. I said, all right, cool. So I started the implementation process of some of the easy stuff, the low-hanging fruit. And the more I thought about it, the more I kind of felt kind of weirded out. It was almost like something was broken or missing. And the more I thought about it, the more I kind of realized, yeah, it was kind of broke and something definitely was missing. So I went back, reread the blogs, pros, cons, even read like NIST and some of the other big publications on how they started and how they recommend starting security awareness programs and stuff like that. And the more I thought about it, the more I just realized I wasn't going anywhere fast. So I took a step back and I said, okay, let me not approach this from a security awareness program perspective. Let me, let me approach this from a different perspective, another vantage point. And really, that's where these three kind of came to mind. Because really, if you think about it, no smoking, wear your seatbelt, and practice safe sex at a foundational level is just another awareness message. It's another awareness campaign. And the thing that really interests me about these three and really a lot of the other popular you know, awareness messages and whatnot is the fact that one, they had figured out the medium. They had, they had figured out the technology to deliver that message. Whether it was radio, film, print, news, you know, sending pamphlets with a guy dressed up in an outfit to you know, primary school, whatever the case may be, they figured out how to deliver a message. The other thing that they really figured out was the fact of how to communicate that message effectively. So, and not only effectively to a small group of people, but to a wide audience, a huge swath of people that learn and assimilate data in different ways. And then lastly, not only did they figure out how to deliver the message and the, the actual delivery of that message being you know, effective in communication, but the emotional hook. So, trying to figure out how do you get users, or in this case, general people, to think about the awareness message and the awareness campaign, not at a head level, but more at a heart? Because we've all seen those ads, regardless of, you know, if it's these three or other campaigns, that are, you know, make you laugh, that are kind of funny, chuckle, to make you think, to, oh my God, I can't unsee this. There's not enough bleach in the world to get this out of my head. So you take, I took all of this, and I went back to the list. And I'm like, okay. What, what's going on? Because definitely it's no longer missing something, it's missing some things. And the more I thought about this and reread again and started coming up with new ideas, the more I realized that I put the cart before the horse. And really when I came to this conclusion, the more that I thought about it, I was like, yes, the cart is before the horse. And I really had that Homer moment, that like, go, oh! kind of moment where it all just kind of fell into place. Because no longer was I baking a cake that was missing that one key ingredient. I was baking a cake that was missing several. And for me, going through this process, really these next couple points are some of my big takeaways as I've gone through this. One is risk. So it's kind of like a Chinaman talking to a Frenchman and they're both talking to each other in their native tongues. At the end of the day, no one really understands what the other one's trying to say. And that's what this list was because I never approached this in the language of business, which is risk. Second point, and this is kind of three points here, is the fact that, one, my list doesn't talk about who's doing this, who owns this program. Never thought about it because, really, if you look at the list, it's me doing everything. Second point is if you can figure out who's doing it, well, what are we trying to change or what are we trying to fix? So users and the user's behavior, culture, risk across the business, don't know, never thought about it. And the third point, surprisingly enough, the list actually addressed, which was how do we fix it? So all my ideas and whatnot was actually subconsciously fixing a part of this. And then really, lastly, probably if you take anything away from this, is management. Because really, excuse me, really at the end of the day, if you don't have management's buy-in, so top down into the awareness program and the awareness campaigns, it goes nowhere, it falls flat on its face, and it dies and rots within. Because look, we've all been in the situation or we've had friends in the situation that you, know, you have a you know, high level member of executives or one of the board members 
at a convention on a Friday night, probably drank a little too much at the bar, trying to get into his you know, VPN or whatnot, and he calls in the help desk, and he's like, look, I need in. And if you don't get me access, then X, Y, Z happens. So what that demonstrates to the frontline guys is the fact that upper management hasn't bought into not only the, the program, but any of the messages of the campaigns. And it just falls flat on its face. You have to have management not only bought hook, line, and sinker into the program, but they need to be living examples of the program and all the messages within the program itself. So really, I've learned a lot through this process, and I'm still learning a lot, don't get me wrong. But really, for me, awareness, you know, the awareness campaign is not 100%. You'll never achieve 100%. The keynote even talked about 100%, and it will never be achievable. Because really, you'll have those guys that continue to smoke regardless. You'll have those idiots that don't wear their seatbelts even though they know they should. And you know that those are going to be people out there that don't practice safe sex. But really for me, learning through this process is the fact that, you know, the security awareness message, like I said before, is really another, it's another tool within a security organization's tool belt. And really, if you think about it, it's just another layer within the defense in depth model. And thus far, that's what I've learned trying to create and build a security awareness program for the company I work for. If you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them at me. Um, my contact information's up there. Love to talk to you guys about this or anything else. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Yes, ma'am. Have you had any experience with, that, with any of the big packaged awareness programs, such as Think Privacy? Um, we've looked at some of them, or at least I've looked at some of them. Um, there's been talk about how do we roll this out and how do we do this. I know this year um, we went in-house, um, but that may be something um, you know down the line. I know without having NDA forms and everything signed with everyone in here, we've um, approached like Twist and Shout um, you know, for their production line of videos and stuff like that. So we're trying to think outside the box because, like I said, I, the company I come from, it's a lot of outside the box kind of people. So death by PowerPoint and the stereotypical awareness posters don't work. So we have to think of a new way of doing this. Anything else, guys? Any other questions? Boom, done.